Hey guys, today we're talking about water makers, in particular the Rainman portable water maker. I'm going to walk you through my install, or what I call a soft install, of my water maker unit in my guest head. Stay tuned. Uh, first off, I want to thank Rainman Desalination for providing support for this video. Uh, they've been a pleasure to work with for this whole project, and uh, I want to thank you guys. Also, the Rainman distributor out of uh, Fort Lauderdale, SeaTask, is uh, offering an awesome deal for all of the uh, Satori viewers out there. If you're interested in a Rainman, definitely go to SeaTask. You can order online, and if you use the uh, promo code Satori, S-A-T-O-R-I, you get $100 worth of freebies, including um, a TDS meter, extra filters, a t-shirt, and then a special thank you letter from us. So uh, make sure you do that if you're looking at buying a Rain Man. Visit our website, sailingsatory.life, for more information on that and all this stuff we're going to talk about. We're also going to touch a little bit on our laundry room conversion, which is part of this Rain Man installation. And Rain Man is, is kind of spawned the idea of having a water maker slash laundry room. If you're not familiar with the Rain Man water maker, uh, one of the big kind of benefits of this unit is that it is portable, right? So it comes in this really kind of handy case. It's a two-piece unit, so you can bring it from one boat to another. If you sell your boat, you can bring it with you. If you're going to help a friend do a passage and you want to bring your water maker with, you can bring it with. If you haven't seen our review of the Rain Man, click here or here, wherever it pops up, and you can take a look at that video and uh, Kelly doing the 10 minute Rain Man challenge where she uh, goes from a brand new Rain Man out of the box to making fresh water in 10 minutes. It's a pretty good video and it demonstrates how easy it is to use. One of the criteria was to preserve that portability. Uh, the second criteria was to maintain kind of a non-invasive install. I didn't want to cut big holes. I didn't want to modify the boat to put this water maker in. The third thing is I wanted everything to be a very simple operation where I can basically start the generator, press a button, turn a dial, and we're making fresh water. The fourth criteria, I just wanted to make sure that we could still use the bathroom if needed. Though I will say that this is not a traditional install. This isn't the textbook way to install this unit, but it is a creative way and it might hopefully give some of you an idea of how to install um, a Rain Man if you're interested in that or really any other water maker. Because we're installing this unit as we're cruising. There are marine stores along the way, although a lot of the plumbing and fixtures available there are limited. So without further ado, um, let's go take a look. So up here in the V-berth, we have our guest cabin, which is the V-berth cabin, and then also um, an extra head back here. If you haven't already seen it, um, go ahead and check out our boat tour video and you'll get a nice layout. It's a pretty cool boat. Satori is uh, a Morgan 44 of 1989, so um, check that out. This is a guest head. It's fully functional, but it is very small, right? You basically have a sink here and the head, and uh, that's pretty much it. We never really used this head at all. It kind of just stayed shut, and maybe we'd throw a bunch of crap in there for storage. But for the most part, it, it remained an unused space, and that's why we decided to convert it into this uh, utility laundry room slash water maker room. So the first thing you see here is this uh, the big pressure unit. This is probably the most awkward portion of the install because it blocks this whole mirrored port part, um, but you can still see yourself in there. Um, and what I did is I actually built this shelf myself, custom sized to fit this unit. glue it all, screw it in, and what I wanted to do is maintain accessibility to the uh, the sink and the faucet, and then also kind of cut the corner here so we still have access to the, the cabinet as well. And the other thing you have access to is the, um, the outlet, the receptacle under there, and that's how this thing's wired in. We're just using this thing um, just plugged in so it's not hardwired into the boat. So that's part of how we maintain our portability. With this thing right here in the open, it also makes it really easy to get to this uh, filter housing. And then when it drips down, it drips right into the sink. And so that uh, is kind of a really convenient side effect of having it right here. The membrane unit, 
I mounted on the bulkhead. I thought of taking the, the two membranes out of here, but I really like just the simplicity and of the of the case. And then also it's the whole portability factor that I talked about. With two screws, this whole thing can come off the wall and it can be taken to another boat. Kind of made it so that this this door of the uh, the membrane housing wouldn't quite open. Right now, it kind of hits the corner of the toilet a little bit, which isn't a big deal. It's a little bit flexible. But with the washing machine where I'm sitting, um, certainly you can't open this thing. So, that is why I drilled these two access holes. Why am I always in a shirt when you're doing your project? <laughs> you can get to the, the pressure gauge, pressure control here, and then get you can actually look at the gauge and see exactly what pressure you're at. For the, the three hoses that come out of this, I drilled some access holes, one up here in the top corner, and then two down here for all the hoses that come out. And then all of the excess hose can just kind of stay so we still have all of the hose that comes with it and uh, it's just kind of contained in the case itself, which is also a nice benefit to having the, the whole case mounted. So walking through all the plumbing for this thing, there's pretty much four hoses involved. We have the intake hose, the high pressure hose that connects the pressure unit to the membranes, you have the brine, which is the wastewater, and then the, obviously the product water, which goes into the tank. So first off, the intake hose. So behind this panel, I've teed into that rinse water supply line, into this uh, supply line for the water maker. I have some backflow preventers, so things can only go the way I want them. Back here, it kind of feeds down around and up into what I consider like a homemade Y valve. I didn't have a Y valve available. Two quarter turn valves, one going to the seawater, the other one opens a hose for the rinse water that can go down here into a bucket. And from that makeshift Y valve, it goes off into the, uh, the native cam connection that comes with the Rain Man. If we wanted to remove this unit, all you need to do is unplug it and then disconnect it, and this thing can be pulled and brought right outside. The next hose in the process is this high pressure hose. It has the high pressure fitting into the, uh, the pressure unit, and then I've just mounted some sticky back bases along the top, um, just to kind of keep it clean and out of the way, and that's where it goes into the membrane unit. We have two outputs down here at the bottom. We have our green line, which is our brine, which is like the, uh, the wastewater. And that goes right up through a check valve, and this was supplied by Rain Man. Rain Man has a whole set of installation parts that they sell with their um, naked unit, they call it. That's a unit that has uh, no case, and so if you plan to install this thing in the bilge or on a bulkhead and you know you don't need the case, you can buy it without the case. Or, um, if you know you want to do something similar to what I've done here and you want all of the Rain Man parts You can order a, a kit that has all of the the T valves and check valves and the Y valve and everything else um, So the Rain Man was kind enough to send that to me uh, I was able to use some of those parts other ones were just too big or I'd already done some of the work And I didn't want to go and redo it uh, But this brine hose after it goes through this uh, check valve goes back behind this panel and then under the sink here, bit of a Frank and plumbing situation. Um, <laughs> this is certainly not uh, a recommended organization. It's not as complicated as it looks, but we have our drain hose here from the sink, which goes out that seacock right there. And I've teed into that for a couple other things that need to be drained. One of those is this brine line that we're that's coming from the membrane um, this is kind of unique because we're working with I believe it's 3 8 inch um, outside diameter kind of a, 
uh, the harder hose that comes with this. Um, losing the proper name for it. But that, I had to build kind of my own reducer so I could get from there to a three quarter inch T. Off of this T, I have a shutoff valve, and this is for the drain for the washing machine. And then this goes to a bilge pump that I put in years ago. Probably should have its own through haul, but that's okay. But the beauty of all this, if you want to call it that, is it's all contained under the sink here. And if everything's disconnected, we can kind of tuck it in there and close this up. I can even pull all of this plumbing from the uh, intake line. We can shove it all in here. This is all out of the way if we have any guests here. So the last bit here is the product line. and It comes off the corner of the case to this Y valve. And this Y valve comes in the uh, Rain Man kit. This way goes to a, just an open hose for test water. And this way goes into the, into the tank itself. Because I couldn't find parts for this 5 16 hose, I had to reduce this down into a quarter inch hose. Um, but I don't, haven't seen to have any flow issues and it seems to be kicking out the same amount of product water. When this valve is turned to the test line, I can bring it down here to the sink, let it run through here until the water is good quality. Using a TDS meter, I can test it. When I'm comfortable with the water being good quality, then I can just switch it back with that Y valve and then it'll go right into the tank. Screeter. You drink, you drink a lot of water today, that's a good boy. Kelly has been waiting patiently for me to do this video so she can do laundry <laughs> because I can't install the laundry machine until I get all this filmed. So, she has graciously volunteered to be our model, our, our operator. <laughs> so what are we going to do? First we have to put on the generator. Yeah, so first off for us to run this thing, we have to turn on the generator. So, turn on the pressure unit. We gotta do the pressure. Slowly. Pressure goes up until it gets right in that little green, the green spot. The, the water's flowing out real nice. So there's two ways to shut this thing down. Um, if you don't plan to rinse it, if you just plan to shut it down and reuse it in a day or two, then you can just, uh, while it's running, s slowly decrease the pressure down to zero and then shut the pressure unit off and you're good to go. Uh, but if you want to rinse it, uh, we'll show you the process for doing the backflow rinse. So I've gone ahead and uh, grabbed a bucket, a clean bucket. take the fresh water and we use it to fill this bucket. You can also do this in the sink if you know that the water in your tanks doesn't have any city water or chemicals in it. Yeah, so the first thing to do is decrease the pressure. Pull our rinse hose out. Switching the valves. So now we're pulling from the bucket. Go ahead and just shut it off. <laughs> then close that valve. To get this washing machine in here, it's really tight fit. Actually, it won't even fit here because this door won't open enough. 
so I have to bring it in through this door. We have this Levac toilet, which sits relatively low. It doesn't have a pump on the side, so nothing's in the way. Just this handle we can tuck off in the cabinet. We're taking a piece of rubber that fits the top of the toilet. That's to prevent it from sliding. Then also made this um, just board that slides right in here. And that gives me a platform to set the washing machine on. It's a little, it's not exactly stable, but once the washing machine is in here and then we strap it in, um, it's all good. It's not real heavy, it's just kind of big and awkward. So, to get it in here, it is a tight, tight fit, especially when you got the hoses on the side. No extra space. We got three connections for the washing machine. We have the inlet where we teed into the uh, cold water supply for the faucet here, the drain hose, and then you have the plug-in. So three connections, this thing's up and running uh, pretty easy. It's tight. So, so add that, open the valve. And then the other connection is the supply line. This also came with the washer. It's got a nice little, it's got a low profile attachment. It screws onto the top. We haven't had any problem with this yet, so continue to use it. And this is like a three quarter inch hose fitting. And then we have water supply. Plug the unit in. It's a little tight. With all the stuff in the way, but let me see if it has power. There it is. For a perfect size load, that yep. white bucket. Mm -hmm. Stuff that. So there we go. And then it tells you the time. You know, do a pretty little bell thing when it's done. So that's it guys, that's our sailboat laundry room. This video is running a little long, so if you want more information on the washing machine, visit our website and our associated blog with this video. On the website we'll also have more information about Rain Man, the uh, install we just did, and then also the special deal from SeaTask, uh, where you get $100 worth of goodies using the promo code Satori. If you want more information about how we do laundry and, and tackle the whole laundry thing here on Satori, uh, comment below. Um, if you don't want to see anything, go ahead and comment below anyway. Also, if this video helped you and you liked it, uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, tell a friend. Thanks for watching.